Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. This is our, our lectionary for the uh, third Sunday of Advent. And um, we are looking at um, verses that are familiar to us. Um, maybe not from where we're reading them now, from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 11, uh, but because these words are the words that uh, we're familiar with being Jesus' sermon uh, that is recorded in the Gospel of Luke. Um, so th these words are very familiar to us, um, maybe from a, what I like to call a different zip code. Um, this is uh, in the section uh, that some people uh, called Second Isaiah, or others would argue it's Third Isaiah. It's, so you, it's a question of whether or not you divide uh, the prophet Isaiah into two sections or three sections. Or I'm not the Old Testament scholar here, so I'm not going to get into all of that. I'm just going to throw it out there because Rolf likes to throw things out for us to uh, have discussion on, and so I that that's my contribution to this. Um, but as we look at this in this season of Advent, um, following along where we've been with the prophets, just recognizing that God's promise to be faithful among God's people, and as we talked about two weeks ago, where the Spirit of God is on God's people, here in Isaiah this week, we actually hear these words, where the Spirit of the Lord is upon the prophet and the Lord's anointing. And um, what always strikes me about this particular reading, and I hinted at it last week, is that um, the presence of God's Spirit is evident not in the rituals of worship, but they are evident in how we treat our neighbor how we treat one another, how we treat others. And that is precisely what this text is about, um, bringing good news to those that are marginalized, those who are victims, those who are held captive, those who um, are uh, oppressed. And that good news is that God has been faithful, the God of ancient the God of history, the God of creation, has been and is faithful. And when we bear witness to God, then that's what people see. They see release to the captives. They see comfort to those who have been oppressed. They see healing to those who have been harmed. Yeah, it, it's just a beautiful vision, and uh, and we do for those churches that uh, that want to have a gospel reading to go along with the text in the narrative uh, lectionary when we're in the Old Testament. We did suggest Luke four, which is uh, as as you said, Joy, the uh, the sermon that Jesus preaches in Nazareth, uh, uh, and reading from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, reading from this chapter, and it's it's. Good to note, especially I think in this season of Advent, that after Jesus closes up the scroll, rolls up the scroll, he says, "Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing." Right. So, uh, in in the in the coming in the in the advent of Jesus the Christ, uh, this vision of of peace and of uh, uh, of of healing and of liberty. Uh, is fulfilled. Uh, it's just a beautiful vision, and I, I I would just encourage you preachers to spend some time with us. Uh, um, you know, the Lord has anointed me to uh, He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. Uh, just uh, so beautiful. And uh, just to note the year of the Lord's favor, uh, um, likely the prophet is referring back to the Jubilee year where the trumpet was blown and, and freedom was declared. Uh, the captives were set free or, or uh, indentured servants were set free and people were allowed mm -hmm. to re uh, uh, return home, uh, mm -hmm. given their land back. So the year of the Lord's favor looks back to the year of Jubilee in Leviticus 25, and for us Christians, looks forward to the fulfillment of this prophecy in Jesus. 
I think the the part that really struck me though uh, is uh, in, starting in verse four. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. I just think of all the ruined cities in our world today, right? Uh, I mean, Gaza uh, comes immediately to mind. Uh, cities in, in Lebanon, Beirut, uh, cities in Ukraine, right? Uh, so many bombs have fallen, so much rubble, uh, uh, so many lives uh, either taken or uh, or destroyed or uh, or certainly uh, uh, damaged uh, in 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 significant ways, and I'm not saying this to be political. I'm just saying uh, we we see this and we have seen this, uh, especially in the last few years, uh, and and so this this word I think uh, speaks at least to me with a, a kind of new pertinence, a, a, a new vision, <laughs> uh, that, that this is a word of hope, right? In a world where we think there's nothing that's going to change this, right? The same old, same old destruction and violence and, and revenge, uh, you know, back and forth, uh, in, including in Israel, I should say, with the, with the, uh, the, the terrible attack of Hamas on, on Israelis, right? That people fighting against others uh, and destroying each other. It's just, it seems like a never ending cycle. And so this vision of the year of the Lord's favor uh, and the the repair and the healing of cities and more uh, even than that, uh, even more lives, the repair of lives, the healing of lives is just a word that, that of hope that I need to hear in this Advent season. I think it's really Difficult to know in this context, in the third Sunday of Advent, whether to preach this story, this prophetic message, in its supposed historical context, which most likely is post-exile, or in the story of Jesus' context. It's hard to know to do that for me. Um, I do want to say one thing about it. I mean, we are going to be in Luke, um, and we are going to be, um, we don't exactly, um, uh, well, we do get this story. We get this story in January 19th, so you're going to get it in a month. Mm -hmm. So we're coming to it. In in that context, just to realize uh, a word that we probably miss here is in verse 1, the word anoint. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, or that is, has fallen upon me, and the Lord has anointed me. Mashach. I am Messiah, Mm -hmm. Jesus. Maybe, at least that's what the people are hearing. So when they rise up to um, throw them off uh, the Mount of Precipitation, isn't that what they call it, Catherine, there uh, in the Holy Land? That is the mount uh, that they're about to throw him off, uh, supposedly, that is what yeah, the people yeah, called it uh, today. Right, yeah, anyway. Right. I, I don't know, actually, but good. Yeah. It is. I, I've, I've got a great picture that. of me up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But, yeah. But, so, just to recognize, there's a messianic claim here, no matter what, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. that is in itself offensive to people. You don't have to go to what's offensive necessarily about the year of Jubilee. I actually don't think it's the year of Jubilee in verse two, because it's the year of the Lord's favor and the vengeance of our God in part, the day of Mm. the vengeance of our God, the next line. But if it Mm. is, by the way, here's what would make people mad in the context of it's, it's a historical setting. Hey, uh, we're back. We've been in exile for 70 years we're back. Oh, all the land goes, it's the year of Jubilee. All the land now goes back to us, to all you people who've been living on our land for 70 years. I mean, that is, it, this might not be the great sort of socialist. Um, uh, <laughs> this actually might be the elites coming back to claim their land from the people, just so you know. Uh, it, this might not be your, your workers' utopia that you think it is in this text. Um, just 
Just a I, word maybe, about that. Yeah, it, it, maybe so. Maybe so. But I, yeah, I, I still do think there's a really na- think about it. As I think there's an incredibly naive reading of this by so many people today. Oh, it's the year of jubilee. It's Leviticus 25. Yay! Isn't this uh, a, a great paradise that God is doing? I do think, though, that the good news to the oppressed. Uh, the the word for oppressed might actually just be better translated poor, good news to the poor, to but, to heal those who are brokenhearted. And here, don't think brokenhearted as sad, but think about to heal the broken. Oh, it does. Uh, yeah. Liberty to captives, release to prisoners. I mean, uh, this is an incredible s- set of good news that, first of all, uh, to a downtrodden people, a prophet was, first of all, sent And then years later, we'll get to that in a month. Yeah, yeah. What's what's noteworthy is um, who is lifted up in the midst of this. So if we go back a couple of weeks to Joel, and where God is pouring out God's spirit on human flesh again, that that men and women, uh, 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 slave, male and female uh, slaves will prophesy that what is the evidence of the Spirit of God? And it is good news. It is relief. It is comfort. It, it is ashes becoming beauty. It is chaos becoming creation. And, and when we read it in that way, it what will happen in a month becomes very interesting because at that time when Jesus has come, Israel, the Jews are uh, under the Roman Empire and they should be expecting the Messiah. And here Jesus comes, the reputation has been that Jesus has been doing some incredible things. And what happens? That's what offends them. They don't hear the rest of this good news. They're offended that God's spirit has anointed this kid they used to know when he was, you know, this man they, they used to know when he was a kid. And I think it's um, it's a parallel for us, um, for us to attend to the fact that when we say we are coming in the name of God, and what we are bringing is hope to those the world has harmed, that that's what's going to be the problem. And so the question is, are we doing this as evidence of God showing up? Because if we're doing this as evidence of good and not God, it will be short-lived. And if we're doing this as evidence of God, People might not be so excited to hear it. I have trivia. What book published in 1776 takes its name from a phrase in this passage? And the answer is verse six, the wealth of nations. Oh, Adam <laughs> Smith, an inquiry into the wealth of nations. He takes from Isaiah 61, six. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but my college econ professor of beloved memory, Bob Garhart would be rolling in his grave had I not said that. Uh, I've been reading a book called Reckoning, I think it's called Reckoning with Power uh, by David Fitch. And I find it very interesting because he's making a difference between how we use scripture to uh, assign worldly power to God versus submitting to God's power. And the comment you just made, particularly about how in 1776 this text was used, just makes me want to lift up this book, Reckoning with the Powers by David Fitch. All right, Catherine. All right. Thank you both. Uh, I, I'm just going to end by noting this. Uh, um, the, uh, the third Sunday of Advent is often considered the Sunday of joy. And so this is a, an appropriate uh, text uh, for that, as um, as both of you have noted, there's a lot of kind of turning things on their head, a lot of joy, uh, uh, turning mourning into gladness, turning uh, ashes into a garland, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. And then it ends with this 
uh, this beautiful uh, poetry about joy. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Uh, I, I read several verses there because I, I want you to hear uh, and I want you to preach that joy this Sunday, right? We've been talking uh, the last couple of weeks about how Advent is a preparation and it's about repentance and and even in this text, the, you know, whether it's the year of Jubilee or not, there may be some uh, some discomfort here uh, or some some warning. And yet it it leads to this vision of uh, things set right, of, of ancient ruins built up, of mourning turning to dancing, mourning turning to, uh, to gladness, uh, and ends with the earth bringing forth uh, new life. And so uh, as you preach this text this Sunday, please... Uh, be joyful, uh, sing some joyful songs uh, in celebration of that salvation that we see coming fulfilled in Jesus the Christ. I Love to Tell the Story is a production of Luther Seminary's Working Preacher. The narrative lectionary was developed at Luther Seminary and has been hosted on Working Preacher since 2011. Find episodes and links at workingpreacher.org slash narrative. And be sure to rate, subscribe, and comment on YouTube. Thanks for joining us.